Welcome to the Advanced Roblox Studio Series. In the Roblox Advanced Studio Series, oh no, not the Roblox Studio Advanced Series, it's where all of the Roblox Studio things that are advanced will be put in, in video. So in this video, in this advanced playlist, I'm going to be showing how to make tools in Roblox Studio. If you don't know what a tool is, a tool is an object that is possible for you to carry in your hand, in your character, while you're playing a game. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can create a tool and how to make it functional. If you're completely new to Roblox Studio or to this channel, or both, then I recommend that you go to the beginner's playlist so that you can get caught up and you're that you're ready to go so that you can watch this video and understand what's happening because if you don't watch it then it's going to be kind of confusing so if everyone's caught up you can get started the first thing you want to do is click on the plus on workspace and click tool now we have our tool but it isn't that simple there's a couple more things we have to do so in the tool, you have to add a part. Now our part's all the way over here. And go to it. So this part right here is going to be the thing that our player is going to hold. So our player is going to be holding this part. And the only way for it to hold that part is if we just leave it like this, then it's just going to spawn in the place where we were setting this up or where it spawned when we added the part. And the only way to make it so that it holds inside of the player's hand is by typing handle with a capital H. If we click play to run the game. Oh, I did a mistake. And that mistake is because I'm not supposed to put it inside workspace. Instead, we have to click on it, drag it down to starter pack. In the starter pack is where things like tools are put inside so that you're able to equip it while playing in the game. Now let's try rerunning it again now that we've put the tool inside of the starter pack. Here we are. Now we can see tool right here. If we click on it, now we have a part in our hand. It's pretty big, if you probably noticed. And that's because we just left it at default. We didn't really edit any properties. But you're able, we're all able to change it if we wanted to to make it look better. But I'm just going to leave it at this since it's, this is just for educational purposes. So what I'm going to do now is show you a couple things of how you can make your tool that functional. So, so far we've learned how to create a tool. It's quite simple, it's not too complicated at all. So, we can go here, then drop down into starter pack, and then we can add a script so that we can make our tool more functional so that we can use it to make a little mini game. It's not gonna, it's not technically not a game of what I'm planning to do, but we'll just call it that for now. So local, I'm going to make a variable for the tool by typing local tool is equal to script.parent. Sorry. We're going to enter twice and we're going to type in four things that I want to introduce. So I'm going to do tool dot oops dot activated tool dot activated is when your tool is clicked well not the tool itself but if your tool is equipped and you are clicking to activate it so then if it checks that it's activated then it's going to give an output so we're going to type connect and then function brackets enter then let's say print 
Uh, how about works? No. How about I'm activated? Activated. Okay. So when we load into it, the uh, game, then if we activate our tool, then it should print, I'm activated. Let's go to play. So now here we are. If we click on tool, and now we have it in our hand. If we click in the output, I'm activated. Yay. So now we have it saying that because of since we equipped it and then clicked, it loaded it in. And it says activate it many times too. You can make it say, I don't know, a bunch of times. You can even make it go to 20, 30, etc. etc. It only affects it only when it's activated or when it's equipped and clicked, which is when it's activated. The next thing I want to show is equipped. Well, not equipped, no, deactivated. Deactivated is the opposite of activated. So tool dot deactivated colon connect function brackets enter and now we're going to type in uh, print we're going to make it print how about um, deactivated yeah, I think I typed it wrong. Deactivated. There we go. Sad. He's sad because he's deactivated. So if we load in, now here we are with our part. And if we click, I'm activated, yay. And if we unclick, I'm deactivated, sad face. So now we, it detected that it was deactivated, so then it gave out that output. And I want to show equipped. So tool.equipped. Colon, connect, and function. Brackets, enter. Let's do print. Brackets, quotation marks. Uh, Want to do an output? Yay! Super happy that he's equipped. It. Oh, I didn't even type it right. Oops. There we go. Loads of quotation marks. So if it's equipped, so when we click onto the tool button, then it will give out that output as well as let us hold our tool. So if we click on tool, our tool's in our hand, and yay, I'm equipped. And the last one is unequipped, but I'm not gonna show it right now because it's pretty obvious. If it's unequipped, then it's gonna give an output. So right here, now that I've introduced those four things. Uh, we're going to do a mini project with the activated tool and unequipped so that I can actually show it. Um, so we're going to close this and close the starter pack. And up here, we're going to create a new part. And here's our part right here. Click onto it. There you go. And we can do control 3. Oops, control 3. Control 3 is so that you can go on to scale with a little shortcut. And we're going to make this a very big part. Like that big. That looks good enough, right? So now what we're going to do is go back into here. And we're going to check if the tool is activated. And then we're going to make it so that the block sort of disappears. Not really, because we want it to come back later. So. How it's going to work is that we're going to do uh, local, and then we're going to call it 
uh, it's called BC for big Q is equal to game dot workspace dot part so game dot workspace dot part next we're gonna do we're gonna do transparency yeah so BC is equal to well not BC BC dot transparency equal to one so that it looks like it disappeared but it's just transparent because if we did BC colon destroy then it wouldn't go well because if we want to bring it back we would have to do a bunch of other things that may be too complicated so we're gonna just say it's transparent and leave it at that so that we're able to make it untransparent so that it looks like it's coming back right so yeah that's the goal so we're gonna do tool oops tool dot now what we're gonna be doing next is checking if it's unequipped so that we can connect it to a function and put brackets then we have tool unequipped connect function and in that function we're gonna make it so that it comes back so we're just going to sort of copy this because we're just going to make the transparency back to zero. It's going to change this. Pretty simple. Now we're going to go to play. And using our magical part, or we should be able to make it disappear when activated and then reappear when we unclick our tool. So let's come over to this guy. You don't really need to click on it. You just need to click on here, click anywhere, and it's gone, right? But when it's unequipped, it comes right back. It's sort of like we're putting the block inside of this, the tool. I don't know, it just seems like it. And then when you put it away, the block comes back. So yeah, that's, that's basically what the goal was here. So that when we click or activate it, then it disappears. And when we unequipped, it comes back. So that was the mini project. And as well as the end of the video so that's about it so far in the series we've learned about how to create a tool and how to check if something's activated deactivated equipped or unequipped and we were able to make this sort of mini game i don't know if you would call this a mini game but we were able to make something so we were able to make it so that the block disappears when it's clicked or activated and then reappear when it's unequipped. So yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you tomorrow.